Hey guys, I'm Jill Powell and today I am joined by the beautiful Miss Jenna and we did this gorgeous natural complexion. We had to do a little bit of concealing and I have some tricks to teach you, so stay tuned. All right, so we're gonna get started with skin, and I went ahead and prepped Jenna's skin off camera, so we did a hydrating serum, moisturizer, lip balm, eye cream, kind of my basic everyday um, skincare that I do recommend. You said you have dry skin, yeah. so I wanted to make sure she had a lot of hydration before we go in with any complexion, because that's gonna really make it look the most natural and just really seamlessly and beautiful, just like skin, so. Um, now that I've prepped you with all of your skincare, I am gonna use a primer, and today I'm gonna use Tatcha, um, I actually have it in a little sample container because I was traveling, so um, sometimes I like to pare down my products into a smaller container. Um, and this one is the Perfect Canvas Primer. I love it because um, it can smooth everything out, but it just looks so natural. Um, I like to apply it with my fingers. If you are not a finger person, um, if you don't like to use your hands, you can also use like a flat brush. Um, but basically this is just gonna smooth complexion, she has a little bit of scarring. She has very, very soft, like really beautiful skin. Um, so I want to make sure that that comes through. Um, but any of the scarring, I just want to make sure that it's nice and smooth. So a very thin layer is all you need. Um, but that's also why I like to use my fingers, just to make sure there's not enough, um, sorry, that there's not too much excess. You want to make sure it's just nice and smooth. So primers help to create that barrier um, so that your oils don't mess up the makeup or break it down. It also smooths out any texture. It helps to keep the makeup on longer. Um, it also keeps like your skincare in there. So primers are really great for everyday use and I always use them with my clients. All right, so she's perfectly primed and now we're gonna go in with foundations. Um, I'm gonna use kind of a combination of foundations. So, and I'm gonna give you a tiny bit of color. She's more on the fair side so we can completely match her color but since she's wearing a mock neck, I'm just gonna give her a tiny bit of color to show you how we can highlight and contour with lighter skin. So I'm gonna use one of my favorite products for foundation. This is the Too Faced Born This Way Multi-Use Sculpting Concealer, but I love it as a foundation. It's just really glowy and pretty. And then I'm gonna go ahead and highlight with a couple different concealers. Okay, so grabbing a synthetic brush. This one's kind of a domed brush by Sigma. It's the Concealer Blend Kabuki. I'm just gonna start on the perimeter of her face. And just doing a sheer layer because I want her foundation to be really natural looking. And then where we need any extra concealing, I'll go in with the concealer. That way she doesn't have too much makeup on on the rest of her face. So again, just starting on the perimeter and then working my way in. I'm just gonna do a sheer layer. And then I am gonna bring it down to her neck. Okay, so now that we have that sheer layer all over, she has her like basic layer of foundation. I'm gonna go in with concealer and add it where we need it. And this is gonna keep the rest of her skin looking super natural, because you don't wanna look like you have too much makeup on. You don't wanna look all cakey or heavy. So I'm gonna go in with a little bit of NARS concealer. Um, I've got two different shades here that I'm gonna be working with. I have custard and vanilla. Okay, so I'm gonna start with um, a little bit of custard and mix in a tiny bit of vanilla just to lighten it. And then I'm just gonna go through, this is a small Smashbox brush. This one is the Shadow Intensifier. But it's synthetic, so I like it for concealer. And I'm just gonna lightly brush over any redness that I see, just to help even that out. And I'm using such a light touch, because I don't want it to um, be too cakey or heavy, I just want it to take away any redness. Like, do you hear that? Yeah. It's oh my gosh, nice. you guys, it is pouring outside. <laughs> Finally in California, rain. like we rain. never get rain. I don't know if you guys can hear that. It sounds <laughs> like I can hear it, yeah. <laughs> it sounds like the heavens are pouring buckets of water. So That's thank nice. goodness, because we need this rain. I know a lot of other parts of the world, you guys get rain. This is kind of a rarity these days for us, but we are going to enjoy it. 
Okay, so look at that. So like, see how I've just kind of concealed out everything that I need to. And then what I can do over here is even take the residual of what's on my brush before and just go over it to make sure that the color is really seamless. So this was the original foundation color that we did and I can just go over and add to it. I love these NARS Radiant Creamy Concealers because they just have this beautiful finish to them. It's not shiny, it's not matte, it really just looks like skin. So these are great for under eye, for spot concealing. I got a little too much there, so I take my finger and I just kind of go over the, around the edges just to make sure that it blends right in. But these concealers are the best. If you see me turning over my brush, it's because I have a little bit of product on the back. So I'm just adding that product and then going back and blending it in. I'm gonna go back in with the foundation that we used in the beginning just to do another sheer veil over the top of everything. And I'm just gonna use a slight padding motion. You can also go in with a beauty blender for this. Um, it's kinda gonna give you the same type of finish, but this brush is almost acts like a beauty blender because of the dome shape. But I just wanna make sure that everything is just really seamless. And if you've noticed, I haven't done anything under her eyes yet because we're gonna go back in and do that as well with a lighter concealer. And I always look underneath just to make sure you get everything along the jawline, underneath the chin. Okay, so now we have basic foundation done. I'm gonna go in with a little bit of a lighter concealer just to highlight the center of her face. I've kind of left the center of her face a blank for now. Um, but that's because I knew I was going to go in with these lighter colors just to really bring some life and light to the center of the face. So I'm just kind of coming up with my cocktail recipe for concealers. I want to make sure that it matches really well and brightens. So I have a little bit of a Becca concealer and, oh my gosh, these colors are so light. This color is cream and then I have a little bit of vanilla and I did use the Laura Mercier Flawless Fusion in 2C. So you don't have to have three concealers at home, but they all kind of have a different consistency and a different color. So I'm going to kind of custom blend just to make sure that I like what my result is. Okay, so I'm gonna start with this Becca color because I think that's gonna be the best color match. Right here, the Laura Mercier 2C looks a little too dark, but it has a great peachiness to it. And then um, vanilla is a little bit lighter, so I really like this color here. Um, this is Becca Cream. And I'm gonna start under the eyes. And she doesn't really have dark circles, but she does have a little bit of a pink shade under her eyes, so we're just gonna conceal that. I'm gonna go all the way in the corners, and I'm gonna sweep this down to her cheeks really, really lightly, and then out. And if you see what this is doing, this is brightening this whole entire under eye, and just really making it pop. So coming down even towards the center of her, or the outside of her nose and right all the way up under the lash line. And I'm just using like kind of a pressing motion and then look down. I'm just gonna also go right underneath her brow and on her eyelid, we're just gonna seal all this up. And this is pretty much the residual so this won't get creasy or anything. But if you look just right here, see the difference in eyes, how that really brightens this color is perfect, actually. So I might not even need the other two. All right, so same thing on the other side. Sweeping it from the inner corners all the way under the lash line. And the brush I'm using, this one is an old Sephora brush. Um, they did a collaboration, and I absolutely love this brush. Some of these brushes were recently on their website, but I do think it might be, um, this specific one is out of stock, but it was the Hakuhodo and Sephora Pro, and Hakuhodo brushes are incredible. They're um, Japanese, and they are some of the best brushes in the world, but they are very expensive, so definitely an investment. Okay, so now that I've brightened under her eyes, I also want to brighten just a little bit in the center of her face. So I'm going to go down the center of her nose, right between the brows, and kind of just pat this in an upward motion, just to kind of brighten the center of her forehead. She doesn't need a ton of coverage here, so I'm just using it for the color. 
That's why I'm not putting too much product on. But just to kind of brighten that center. I'm also going to brighten just a little bit in the corners of her mouth. And right here in the center of her chin. And all this is doing is just adding a little extra dimension. And let's sweep it under the nose too. I am going to take my ring finger and just kind of press and eliminate any extra moisture. I don't like to use too much powder, so I like to have my concealers somewhat set by themselves, and then I'll go in just with like a light touch of powder, just to make sure that it stays all day. But basically, when I use my ring finger, that's just absorbing any extra moisture that's on the top layer and leaving the pigment so that you still have that coverage but you won't get any creasing or anything. I didn't even need those other two colors, so. Okay, so now that we have all of the concealing done, we do need to bring a little bit of life back to the face. So we need a little bit of contour, a little bit of highlight, a little bit of blush, and she is more of a fair skin tone, so I don't wanna do anything that's really, really dark contour, but we're gonna do something a little bit lighter. So I think I'm going to try this is an old NARS palette that I love. Um, it might be out of stock right now, but I do think that they carry some of these colors. Um, yeah, I've got like Laguna and Casino, but the, the sun wash diffusing bronzer. So it's not really um, like the dark, dark pigment. It's a little bit lighter. So I'm gonna try those on her. And I'm gonna use a small angle brush. And I think for you, let's start here. This is Laguna in the lighter one. So I'm just gonna start, and she has, perfect cheekbones, so she's pretty much center of the ear. So I'm gonna start in the center of the ear and just create a little bit of a contour from the center of the ear down towards, and I'm angling towards the outside of the mouth. I like to start and place my brush always back here, sweep it down to get that pigment like perfectly like deeper in the kind of the hairline center of the ear and then lighter towards the center of the mouth um, because what that does is it creates that really soft diffusion so that you don't get like a blob right here. Wherever you place your brush first is where the most color gets dropped off. So I always like to drop that color off right into that hairline creating that shadow and then softening as it goes up. So I'll do a little bit harder of a pressure and then I sweep it out so that the angle brush kind of acts as your blender. So that way I'm not getting anything that I need to blend right in that center. I'm gonna add a tiny bit to her jawline. She doesn't really need jaw contouring, but it just looks really great in photos. So I always like to show people how to do their makeup for photography. So just a very, very tiny bit right here. I'm gonna add just a very tiny bit to her hairline. She has a good shaped forehead, so we're not correcting anything. We're just creating dimension. Sometimes it's nice if you don't want to do too much forehead, you can do your cheek and then just a little bit from your brow out. It just creates like this lightness here and then a lightness here. It just creates like a beautiful contour. So it's another way you can do it. Gorgeous. I'm going to turn you. And when I do the jawline, I sweep it right here and then I sweep down. Because you don't want to have a big old line, especially if you yawn or if you laugh or if you open your mouth and you have this line right here, that is not cute. So you always want to make sure that your jaw con contour is blended down so that it just looks like a shadow and it doesn't look like makeup. And then I'm at, she has like a perfect nose. So I wouldn't normally contour this, but I know that nose contour is really popular these days. It does look amazing in photography. Um, you want to make sure that it's really natural because you don't want to notice it in person. That's like my biggest pet peeve is when something looks amazing in a photo, but then you see them in person and it doesn't look amazing. My style of makeup is looking great when you see someone in person as well as in photography. So when you're doing a nose contour, it has to be really, really subtle. Um, she has a perfect nose, so we're not going to change the shape of it. But since she is fair, we don't want it to get lost in a picture. So I'm just gonna do a very slight, this is a fluffy brush. This one is by BH Cosmetics. It came in a little set. It's actually a really great set. Um, but it's a fluffier synthetic brush, so it does kind of have like a stiffer firmness to it, but it is really fluffy. So it's gonna place but blend. 
and I'm starting just in the corner of her like eye socket and I'm coming straight down. So from here, basically under her brow, and I'm adding a second layer just to show you where I'm going, but I don't want it to be too dark again. So under her brow right here and then straight down the sides. And then I like to just blend it down so that you don't have like a strict line. You do have like a perfect nose, oh my gosh. So this is just gonna look really great in photos because it's, she has a little bit more of a fair skin tone, so you don't wanna lose that. Especially if you're doing your Snapchat filters or anything, it really diffuses a lot. So this will just help to kind of keep her nose shape and really look great in photos, so. She's got a beautiful natural contour going on. We've gotta add some highlight, and since I'm in this palette, we're just gonna stick with this palette, and I'm gonna go in with Another brush, this one's also by BH, it's their number four. And this was from um, a limited edition one that I got actually. So with her skin tone, I think I'm gonna go with this lighter shade. I, either this or this kind of champagne-y, peachy gold. But I think I'm gonna start here. And we're just going to highlight like the high planes of her face. Do you like to be glowy? Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> I love a good glow. So I'm gonna bring her glow a little bit to the center. Um, sometimes you just keep it right here on the outsides, but she has this beautiful light porcelain skin. So I want to just create a lot of glow with it because I think that that just really complements so well. So again, starting here on the outsides and bringing it down almost to the apples, but just right above them. I'm gonna add a tiny bit just above her brow bone. And since she is dry, I could do a little bit of a sheen in the center, but sometimes I like to keep that um, open just so that she doesn't look oily. I'm gonna do a little bit down the center of the nose. Really light touch. She has such a good nose, so I don't want to mess that up. And then I'm also gonna do just a little bit on the Cupid's bow really lightly. And then I'm gonna do a tiny bit on her chin. I'm also gonna add this champagne color just because I wanna try it out. So I'm gonna do it a little bit lower um, where it's almost gonna go into where her blush is gonna be. Just because, why not? Glowy skin is my favorite. And I'm gonna add this a little bit more on her forehead. I'm gonna see how this looks. So these are some new blushes I just picked up recently. This is um, Jouer Rose Gold Blush Duo. So there's Marigold and Rose Petal. I think I'm gonna try this Rose Petal color. And I'm using an LCF10 brush. It's just another angled, smaller brush. Um, and for Jenna, I'm gonna start, she's got great cheeks too, so I'm gonna start right where her cheeks kinda pop. And just really lightly Blend the blush so that I have a lot of color there, blending it up and then down onto the apples. Very pretty. If you have a hard time picking a blush color, you can always look at the lip color. Sometimes that gives you a hint. She does have more of like a pink, but with her skin tone and like with the highlights that we were doing, I knew she could handle kind of like a peachy pink. So you would look really good in those like cool pink blushes too. Okay, so now that I'm happy with everything that we've done on her complexion, except for this little friend up here. This guy just wants <laughs> to keep coming out. He wants to come out and play. No redness. But that's what I have a little bit of concealer left on my brush. Okay, so now that we have everything, and because we did do some concealing, I do want to set her with a powder. Um, one of the things I've done in my kit is I've taken some of my favorite powders and put them in like a small stackable case. So I use different powders for different complexions or different areas. Um, because every powder is a little bit different. Some of them are really matte, some of them are really glowy. So um, I have some of my favorites right here. Um, on Jenna, I think I'm gonna use um, maybe even like a combination. So I really love the La Mer powder as like a super natural. So um, if anyone has any texture for anyone aging or fine lines and wrinkles, which obviously you do not have any wrinkles, um, but anything that you want to look really, really subtle. I love a La Mer powder. It is a little bit more expensive, but it's a huge, huge, huge container and it will last you a very long time. 
Um, the RCMA powder is really great for, I love it for like concealing under eye. I feel like it stays. It's really got that stay power. So I'm probably going to use some of the RCMA on places that we've concealed because I know it's going to stay. Um, Hourglass Veil is another great one for mattifying but also looking very natural. So, and then I do love the Lancome Translucent as well because that one has a little bit of a glow to it. Not really like a glow glow, but it just is really pretty. It looks like skin. So I might use a combination. We're just going to see where my brain takes me. Um, and then I'm going to use this small MAC 133. Um, let's start with RCMA because I think that the RCMA is completely translucent, so it's a white powder. And I'm going to use this on some of the places that we concealed just because, again, I know that RCMA will make the makeup stay really well. It's super long wearing. So I'm just using kind of like a pressing padding motion. Okay, I swear we're getting like four I inches of rain it. right now, right? <laughs> yeah. It's so crazy. So if you guys can hear it, I mean, just say hallelujah because we haven't had rain. Gosh, we haven't had like good rain. We got rain like a couple weeks yeah, ago. barely, just a little bit. But it was like since April or something. Oh, it sounds like hail out there. It does. I wonder if it's hailing. Yeah, that's crazy. Okay, so I'm gonna use a tiny bit of this La Mer powder. Um, it does have a tiny bit of color, but it's not like darkening. So I'm gonna start up on her forehead um, because it just looks so natural. I don't want, she's more of a drier texture. Um, I don't wanna make her look dry, dry. And this La Mer powder is so beautiful. I'm gonna use a little bit under her eyes. And I know what you guys are gonna say, I'm doing this on top of my highlighter, I know. You can always go back in and add more highlighter if you want. But I don't always powder, so sometimes I get everything done and then realize I wanna do a little bit more. But you have school today, so we wanna make sure that this makeup lasts in this rain. Mm -hmm. We should have done waterproof makeup today. <laughs> I'm just adding a little bit of my residual. We might add a little more glow. Why not? One more dusting won't hurt. So pretty, but it just sets everything and makes it look so natural. I'm just going in with what we did before. All right, so I think I have completed the complexion. So just to kind of recap a little bit, primer is really important to smooth everything and then do your foundation first before your concealer. You'll be surprised you'll use even less product and that's gonna make it look way more natural. So we went ahead and concealed everything and then I set everything with a powder just to make sure that it doesn't budge and it stays all day. If you want more coverage, this is where you could also go in with a powder foundation, but I think that we did really good with what we have. So this is just a beautiful natural complexion. Thanks again for watching my video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Comment below what you want to see next. All of the products used in my video are also linked below. And if you want to see more, follow me anywhere at Joe Powell Glam. Thanks again.